Hello, I'm Paul Single, Managing Director here at City National Rockdale, and welcome to Economic Perspectives. This month, we're going to spend our time focusing on the housing sector. When the Fed began raising interest rates back in March of last year, we knew it would have an impact on housing because housing is the most interest rate sensitive sector of the economy. Now, housing is a little bit more complicated in terms of understanding versus other data that comes out. You know, there's one labor report, there's one CPI report. For housing, we need to look at an awful lot of data to get a feel of what the transitions that are happening in that part of the economy. So we're gonna go through a number of charts here to talk about what has happened with housing and talk about our expectations going forward. In this first group of charts, we're taking a very broad view in terms of what's going on in the housing sector, in terms of its relationship to the overall economy or GDP. Within GDP, the housing sector is called residential investment. This is the building of homes. But you can see on the chart here on the left-hand side, going back to 1980, and the gray columns represent recessionary periods. The interesting thing that you can notice right off is the fact that housing has become a smaller percentage of the overall economy since the global financial crisis compared to what it was beforehand. And there are two reasons for this. Demand for homes over the past decade was quite low because many of the young people that would normally be buying new homes didn't want to because they saw the big losses that their parents had taken on their homes during the housing bust. Secondly, the lenders, they were still <laughs> licking their wounds from uh, the global financial crisis and they were only issuing mortgages at attractive levels to people with high levels of credit quality. So it suppressed the amount of home construction that was going on. The chart on the right is a more contemporary view of what's going on in terms of the housing sector. Uh, this is measuring the percent change. The column is the quarterly, the line is the year over year. For the last eight quarters, it has been a drag on economic growth, clearly showing that there's not been enough construction going on to meet the demand. In this next chart here, we're taking a look at household formations. This is the amount of new households that are being created. And you can see that the line, which is a five-year moving average, because it's volatile on a yearly basis, uh, has been upward trending. And this means that the demand has been picking up. What it doesn't show is the demand for homes increased significantly following the pandemic as people moved out of rentals and wanted to own their own home. So what we had was a combination of limited supply in the market for the last decade or so, clashing with a high level of demand. And what that comes through with is higher pricing. On this chart here, you can see the relative cost of a home. And I think this is an important way of measuring uh, the change in the value of a home because it depends on how much money people are bringing in. But you can see following the pandemic, it really skyrocketed. It's now 4.3 times the earnings of a household. That's an awful lot compared to what it was just before the pandemic at around 3.4%. So housing has gotten very, very expensive. And of course, what this means is seen in this next chart in terms of inflation. The CPI group calls housing shelter. And you can see from 2021 to 2023, it took off. And that became a big concern for the Federal Reserve Bank. They wanted to bring this under control because shelter costs make up about a third of CPI. So they needed to bring it up under control. So that's why they began raising short-term interest rates and uh, changed their holdings of uh, bonds, and that pushed up longer-term interest rates. And you can see that in this chart here. This is showing us the mortgage rate for newly acquired homes. And as you can see, it's an extremely high level that we haven't seen in quite some time. And that really had a big impact in terms of home buying. And it can be seen in this next chart here. This is the column chart showing what a mortgage payment would be for a median priced home. And the most recent data that we have is of uh, June. And it's around $2,200 for a median priced home. Look at where it was just two years ago, June of 2021. That's about $1,000 less. That had a big impact in terms of the demand for homes. And we saw demand drop off significantly in this next chart. This is the sale of new and existing homes. So it's all the homes that are going being sold in the country. And you can see it dropped by about a third. That's a pretty significant decline to levels that we haven't seen in a long time. And this was a bit of a shock. Uh, normally when the Fed raises interest rates, it doesn't have that big of an impact on the housing market. And that can be seen in this next chart here, the very black line towards the bottom. 
This is showing the percent change in home sales since the Fed started raising interest rates. It's down, like I said, by about a third. And it's also taking a look at all the other business cycles that we've had when the Fed started to raise interest rates and what the impact was on the housing market. And it goes back to the 1970s. And as you can see, it was only one other time that we saw it have an, an impact on home sales. Most other times, they continued into the positive sector. So the Fed accomplished what it wanted to do in terms of reducing the demand and hopefully bringing down uh, pricing for an awful lot of these homes. But what's interesting is how it is affected, whether it's a new home or an existing home. Now, it's important to remember that existing homes make up nine out of 10 homes that are sold um, each year. New homes will make up the other 10%. But focus now on these uh, red ovals. You can see a deviation taking place because when you take a look at these two sectors for the decade beforehand, they pretty much moved in tandem. But what we saw following the recession or the early days of the pandemic is that the amount of existing homes did not increase in sales nearly as much as new homes. And the reason for that really had to do with the fact that people that own homes sure didn't want strangers walking around their home during the pandemic days. So there weren't many uh, that were for sale. So people bought new homes. But look at the oval on the right hand side. We see a deviation going on again. And the reason this time around is the fact that there's just not enough supply of existing homes coming into the market. And again, remember, that's nine out of 10 homes that are sold. The reason for this is that people with an existing home really don't want to give up the low mortgage that they've had. They were able to refinance at a very low rate. And that's been a way of helping the economy because it provided more cash flow. Um, but they don't want to give that up. And the differential between what people have for a mortgage versus the new mortgage rate is very, very high. The uh, light blue line that you see here is the mortgage rate for a newly acquired 30-year fixed rate mortgage. The dark blue line that you see here is what is existing there, all the people that own homes. This is their, uh, the weighted average amount. And you can see the gray area, uh, the differential between the two is very, very high. And this is why there's not many existing homes that are in the market. And as a result, existing home sales have been falling. In this next chart here, you can see uh, how it has come down significantly uh, since 2022. What I mentioned is the inventory, and you can see that here on the right-hand side. Inventories of homes right now, of existing homes, is 1.1 million, well below the long-term average of 2.4. So just stop and think about that. You've got less than half the supply of what you normally average. That just means there aren't going to be as many sales of existing homes. So it's pushing people off into newer homes. And that's the important part here. New home sales, uh, the column is the monthly change, the line is the three month change, and that's trending up. The people are buying the newer homes uh, that are on the market. Um, but there's not enough of them in general. So what we're seeing now is demand for creating more homes is increasing. This is building permits. And if you look over on the right hand side, the trend has stabilized and is actually starting to move back up again. So that's meaning that this part of the economy uh, might see some growth going forward. And home builders are pretty happy with this. You know, big part of the problem in the last few years is the cost of labor and the cost of, of materials. And although labor hasn't fallen much in terms of cost, material prices have. And you can see that in this chart on lumber. Lumber prices skyrocketed in the early stages of the pandemic. You can see that uh, the futures market was trading around $400 uh, and it went up around uh, almost $1,600. So four times increase, pretty significant, but now they're back down to the levels that we had um, beforehand. And on this next chart, you can see where it's making home builders very, very happy. This is a measurement of uh, home builders from the National Association of Home Builders. And it's a diffusion index. So whenever the number's above 50, it means expansion. And you can see that it's moved above 50. So home builders are quite happy about it uh, going forward. And on this next chart, you can see the data coming out on the housing sector has been very, very good in terms of the economic releases. This is a measurement of that. And you can see the upward swing over on the right hand side has been quite significant compared to what we have seen uh, in the past. So it's telling us that this is a sector of the economy that's doing much better. And it's doing much better because the supply and the demand are sort of meeting each other. And it's causing prices not to appreciate nearly as much as what we had seen in the past. 
This chart here just shows the cost of housing in terms of percent change for whether you own a home or rent a home. And you can see that the increases have declined significantly over the past year or so based on the Fed's actions. So what does this mean for the inflation part of the, the housing sector? Well, this is the chart that we had earlier uh, showing the year over year change of shelter costs. But if we add on the change of the last three months and annualize it, you can see that that's coming down significantly. This is telling us the more current trend. And this is important because the price increase right now just stands at five and a half percent for the last three months change annualized. And you know, back in February of this year, it hit a peak of nine and a half percent. So it's accomplishing what the Fed wants to have happen where supply is meeting the demand. So what can we draw from all of this information? Well, I think there are two important points here. Uh, first of all, the worst of the housing market is probably behind us. Uh, we think uh, housing will be a positive contributor to GDP going forward. It won't be significant, mainly because of the affordability aspect. I mean, home prices are high and, and financing costs are high. Um, but because of that, it's reduced the amount of demand and bringing it much closer to the amount of supply, which brings up the second point and the aspect that if you have neutrality between the demand and supply, uh, the inflationary pressures should not be that significant, which is exactly what the Fed wants. So what we're seeing is an improvement in the housing and the inflation of housing uh, be fixed in a relatively quick period of time uh, without a problem being created. This is Paul Single. Thank you for watching, and I'll be back next month.